Welcome back, everybody, to your deep dive for today. I'm glad to be back. We are diving headfirst into this wild world of the biotech stock market. Oh, yeah. And specifically, we are really just zeroing in on October 10th, 2024. Okay. And this is a day, um, you know, where we saw companies making these huge strategic changes. Right. Like really shaking things up. And at the same time, you have these super promising drug trials going on. Yeah. And and even with all this, some of these stocks, they just took a nosedive. Yeah. Even when there was good news. It's true. It's what is going on. Yeah, the market sometimes, it feels like it's playing by its own rules. Yeah. It really does. But we're going to try to break it down. Absolutely. Make sense of it. Yeah. For everybody today. The biotech sector for sure is known for its volatility. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, it, it really is one of those spaces where even just like a little whisper of good news can send these stocks through the roof. Yeah. And then just a tiny bit of uncertainty and it's like. And they're gone. They're gone. Yeah. Yeah. And today is like the ultimate example of that. It really is. Yeah. So let's jump right into it. Oh, okay. With 180 life Sciences Corp or ATNF if you're following along at home. Mm -hmm. Now, this one's really interesting because they basically did a 180. Ah. No pun intended. Right. But they totally ditched what they were focused on before, and they have now moved to this whole world of eye gaming. Yeah. Online gaming. Online gaming is huge. Huge. It's really big right now. And it's only getting bigger. Absolutely. So it is. So, it's a bold move for sure. It is a bold move. Um, I mean, they did announce that their Nasdaq compliance is back on track. Okay. And then on top of that, they kind of pivoted to this whole online gaming thing. So, oh. I think the market is kind of optimistic, but also cautious. Yeah. Um. You know, AT and F shares went up sixteen percent. Okay. Which is pretty good. Yeah. But whether or not their background in biotech translates to this online gaming world. Who knows? Yeah, it makes you wonder what's going on behind the scenes. I know. Yeah. Like, what? What? How does that even happen? I don't know. What was the thought process? What prompted this big change? Yeah. But you know what? Maybe they're on to something. Maybe they are. Maybe this is going to be huge. Time will tell. Right. Yeah. Time will tell. It really will. But speaking of bold moves, Duh. let's talk about Wintree Therapeutics, or W-I-N-T. Okay. So they've been working on this... Um, Treatment, mm -hmm. this deroxamine. Okay. And it's for acute heart failure. Right. Which is a big deal. It is a big deal. And the way it works is it's designed to kind of combat the side effects that you get with some of the current treatments. Right. Like increased heart rate mm. and low blood pressure. Yeah, those are pretty serious. Very serious. Side effects. So, yeah. you know, on the surface, that sounds like a good thing. Right. It, it does. You're treating something very serious and you're also addressing the side effects at the same time. You would think you would think that the market would be all over that, but they weren't quite there. Yeah. They announced the design for their phase 2B trial. Okay. So this is where they're going to be testing it on a larger group of people gotcha. to see really how effective it is. Okay. WINT actually saw their share price drop 18%. Oh wow. Which is a lot. That is significant. It is. What do you think made investors so nervous? Well, you know that is the thing about biotech. Yeah. It's like Investor sentiment can be just as important as the actual science. Wow. So even when you have what sounds like a really groundbreaking drug, yeah. any uncertainty, whether it's real or just perceived, right. can make investors a little jumpy. Yes. And in this case, I think it's that they're reacting to the fact that it's a phase 2B trial. Okay. Which inherently has risks. Yeah. Especially for something as serious as acute heart failure. Right. Because you don't know what's going to happen. You just don't know. Yeah. You don't. It's a good reminder, though, that just because you have positive developments doesn't mean that's going to equal success in the stock market. You know. It's not always as easy as, like, what's good news, what's bad news, because yeah, like that. sometimes there's so much more to it. There's nuance there. Yeah. There is. It's not just the what. It's the how and the when. Exactly. And are you ready to see that play out again in reverse? Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's talk about 10X Genomics or TXG. Okay. They're known for their... Chromium and spatial platform. Okay. Which are basically super sophisticated tools that scientists use to analyze DNA. Right. Uh, Tenex Genomics, I've heard that name. Yeah. They're doing really cutting edge stuff, right? They are. Didn't they have some news come out today? They did. And this is a good example of why investors sometimes look beyond just the headlines. Okay. So they announced their preliminary results for Q3. Okay. And overall revenue seemed to be pretty much steady. Okay, but yeah. then if you dig a little deeper into the report, there was a significant detail. Okay, what's that? 
46% drop in revenue from instrument sales. Oh. That's a big drop. So even though their total revenue seemed fine, that one detail. Yeah, that one detail sent investors running for the hills. Wow. So it's like one little thing can just tank it. It can, and it makes sense if you really think about what a drop in instrument sales means. Okay. Because investors are seeing that as a sign that maybe momentum is slowing down. Uh-huh. Are fewer researchers using their technology? Yeah, okay. Is there more competition coming? Right. So those are the questions that are on everybody's minds, even mm-hmm. though the overall revenue was fine. Wow. So, yeah, even if, like, the ship looks good from above, right? you got to look below the surface exactly. and make sure there's not a hole. You need to make sure that you know everything is running smoothly below deck. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I think makes following the biotech market so fascinating. Yeah. Because you never know what's going to happen. It's like you think you know, and then, right. surprise. It can be nerve-wracking. It can be. It really can. But it's exciting. It is exciting. So speaking of exciting. Okay. Remember CanFight Biopharma? Yes. They're the ones developing that really promising cancer drug. Right. Nemodanosin? Yes. Yeah. They had some really good news. They did. Today. Yeah. They got orphan drug designation from the FDA Uh for pancreatic cancer treatment. Okay. So tell me more about this orphan drug designation. So an orphan drug designation is a pretty big deal, Go. especially for a company like CanFight. Okay. It means that the FDA is recognizing that they're developing a treatment for a rare disease. Okay. Which in this case is pancreatic cancer. Right. And it opens the door for a lot of incentives. Like what? So tax credits fee waivers. Okay. Maybe even a faster path to market. Wow, so it just like... Yeah, it kind of like... Streamlines everything. It really does. Okay. It doesn't guarantee that the drug will be successful. Right. But it definitely increases the odds. Yeah. And it makes it way more attractive to investors. That makes sense. And the market seems to agree because uh. CanFight's share price jumped 19%. That's right. So finally, a case today where we're seeing this positive news be met with a positive response. Yeah. It's nice. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes there is a little bit of clarity exactly. in the biotech world. Exactly. And it's not just can fight that's having a good day. Oh. No. Let's talk about Kizar Life Sciences, or KZR. Okay. They've been working on these really interesting therapies for these immune-mediated and oncologic disorders. Mm-hmm. And they have gotten the attention of a big player. They have? Who is it? Who is it? Yeah. It is Tang Capital Management, okay. which is a firm known for their smart investments. Very savvy yes. in the life sciences sector. Yes, and they recently acquired a pretty big chunk of Kizar. They did like almost 10% of the company. That's a lot. That's a big vote of confidence. Huge vote of confidence. It is. What did the market do? Kizar shares closed up 17%. Wow. Which is... That's amazing. Like a big jump. Yeah, so when a firm like Tank Capital makes a move like that, yeah. people notice investors pay attention to that. For sure. Because it's like they have this deep knowledge. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. So if they're putting their money there, it's like, exactly. I'm going to put my money there too. Right. <laughs> That's a good sign. Are you ready for another one of those head scratchers? Oh, no, am I? I know. What happened? Where the good news was met with kind of a lukewarm response. Okay, tell me. Okay, so ClearSide Biomedical. Okay. Or CLSD. Mm-hmm. They're working on a treatment for wet age-related macular degeneration. Okay. Or AMD. Right. Which is obviously a really big cause of vision loss. It is, especially as we age. Especially as we get older. Yep. So very important. Mm Mm-hmm. And they just released these really promising phase 2B trial results. Okay. Where patients are having really significant vision improvement. Wow. And so... Sounds good. So far, right? It does sound good. Good for patients? Yeah. Good for investors. Uh Uh-huh. But here's where it gets interesting. ClearSide biomedical stock actually dipped 11%. How is that possible? (laughs) I know, right? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't track. What is going on? I don't know. So confusing. Why would it go down on good news? Well, it's a classic case of the market looking beyond the headlines. Okay. They see the good news, but then they think, okay, what's the bigger picture? Right. And so... Investors are probably thinking about the competition yeah. in the wet AMD treatment space. Which is a big... It's huge. It's a big market. There are some big players in that market already. So they're probably thinking, okay, this treatment looks good, right? but 
Is it going to be able to compete? Exactly. Can it compete with what's already out there? With these huge companies. Yeah. And it's not just about the science. You know, right. investors are thinking about things like manufacturing, okay. marketing, and just like the company's overall financial health. Right. So sometimes you have this great treatment. Mm hmm but it's coming from a smaller company. Right, and they can get overshadowed by these huge companies with tons of resources. It's because they have more money. Pretty much. All right, so before we wrap up this whirlwind tour of the biotech market today, okay. let's do a quick recap of the other big movers. Okay, sounds good. Those quick hits. Yeah. So remember, Inhibit Casey Therapeutics. IKT. IKT, yeah. Yeah. They're working on a treatment for pulmonary arterial hypertension. Okay. Which is a serious lung condition. It is. And they just got a ton of money. They did $110 million. $110 million. For their phase 2B trial. For their phase 2B trial, that's huge. That's a lot of money. That is a vote of confidence right there. Big time. So obviously their stock went up. 6%. 6%. Which makes sense. Yeah, investors see that money coming in and they're like, okay. They're like, I want to get in on that. I'm going to put my money there too. Exactly. But then we have Cardiotherapeutics. CRDL. CRDL, yeah. yeah. And their stock actually dipped 7%. It did. After they announced they were offering more shares. Why is that a bad thing? Because if you think about it, like let's say you have a slice of pie. Okay. A really delicious pie. Okay, I like where this is going. And then somebody comes up and cuts that pie into more slices. Wow. Oh. Your slice just got smaller. Yeah. And that's essentially what happens when a company offers more shares. Sure. The ownership gets spread out more, okay. which can lower the value of each individual share. So more shares out there, less value. Exactly. It's just supply and demand. Makes sense. Yep. Now, what about a GRI? Bio. GRI. Yeah, their stock went up 9% today. It did. They had a good day. They did. What was their good news? So an analyst at Ascendient Capital okay. initiated coverage on GRI with a buy rating. Okay, so when an analyst does that, it's like a big deal. It's a big deal. They're basically telling everybody they think this stock is going to go up. So it's like a stamp of approval. Pretty much. And then we have Viking Therapeutics. VKTX. VKTX. Yeah. They had positive news. They did. They had a trial. Their treatment for a rare genetic disorder mm -hmm. went well. It did. But their stock still dipped. 6%. I know. It's kind of crazy, oh, right? I don't, I don't understand that one. So even with the good news, yeah, they got caught up in a broader market downturn. Oh, so sometimes it's not even about the company. Sometimes it's not even about the company. It's just the market. It's the market. Wow. So we really covered it all today, huh? We did. We sure did. We talked about strategic changes, mm. promising drug trials. We saw it all. Investor sentiment. Yeah. That just seems to change with the wind. Yeah, it's like trying to predict the weather. And just the reminder that in biotech... What's that? Sometimes good news is met with like a shrug. Right. And then bad news is actually a good thing. It's true. It's wild out there. The biotech sector is a wild ride. It's a roller coaster. It is a roller coaster. That's for sure. That's for sure. Well, until next time, everybody, keep learning. Keep exploring. Keep exploring. And remember, this is not financial advice. Always do your research. Do your research. Talk to a financial expert. Talk to your financial expert before making any decisions. Please do. This has been The Deep Dive. Until next time. Signing off.